So last night was a really, really good night, I think, for the rabbits to be running. And I did put it, I said that in the video I posted today, which is probably the 21st now, I guess, of December. I, uh, I think that's just frost in the trees. I, uh, I said I had seven snares out, but on the way home, I set one more. So I, I have a, a total of eight snares put out in this area, but this area is not the area where Josh and I had set snares. Out there, there seemed to be a pretty decent pocket of rabbits. Here, our, uh, the population is low in this area where I'm at right now. Uh, I might set, I made up a dozen more snares. So as this day progresses, I might set up a few more. But the plans have changed for me for today. I'm going to look for a pole so I can uh, do some polling in the, in the rivers next year. I'm looking for a nice spruce pole, probably about inch and a half, two inches in diameter and 12 to 14 feet long. I've never tried polling on a uh, kayak before. I have one of those uh, stand on top kayaks or sit on top kayaks. And uh, <clears throat> the way it's shaped, it has a, a V hull or whatever they call it. You know, or uh, almost like a catamaran. You know, it, it has that hollow hull, flotations uh, on the outer edges. It might be the perfect rig for polling. I might have to uh, take up my seat and go back a little further, stand a little further back in the kayak to get the, uh, you want, when you're, when you're polling, you want the bow of your boat out of the water so it doesn't hook the, the current and, and throw you around, you know? So yeah, I think next year I'm going to do some fishing and maybe salmon and trout fishing videos off of the kayak, going up some of the brooks and uh, doing doing some polling and uh, seeing if I can't, uh, you know, get proficient at it and, and see how much effort really goes into it and if it's something that I can do comfortably. Or uh, you, you see a lot of polling videos online. But yeah. Anyway, like I said, I got a dozen more snares set up and now I'm going to go down through this thick stuff and look for uh, a couple of poles that I can clean up and, and uh, peel and let dry so that come spring they'll be ready. And this is a falling moon so it's a good time to, to cut wood if you're cutting wood. Anyways, I'm going to go down through here and anytime I'm in thick stuff, I like to turn my hat around because I don't want to get a, the bib of your hat sometimes will hide a branch. If you're ducking under, you can get a, easily get a branch in your eye. So anyways, I'm heading that way. And it's legal to shoot squirrels now in, in Newfoundland. So if I come across a squirrel, might just have some squirrel for lunch. Stay tuned. Hey, it looks like I might have found a candidate. Yeah. This is black spruce. I don't know if it will actually be uh, make a good pull. Because uh, black spruce tend to be heavier, right? But strong, dense wood. This is, this is old wood. This is this. When the wood grows this tight together, it, it don't grow. Uh, it don't grow good, you know. 
they they normally come in and and silver culture areas and open it up and cut down way more trees uh, than they'll ever harvest you know just so that the ones that they leave behind have space and room to grow right now this is such a cluster all the nutrients and everything that goes into the ground goes into feeding all of these trees right and they never uh, amount to much some some will will uh, develop better than others but for the most part they all suffer because it's a falling moon it's a it's a good time to harvest them the the wood will stay drier it'll get lighter what you what you need to do is you cut down a tree you leave the branches on and you get the butt end up higher than uh, than the tip and uh, let that uh, let that drain out that way you know but now that it's cold below freezing I don't know how good that sap will run Jonathan Stiles if you're watching I need a small silky saw like a smaller smaller blade I like this little one uh, for rabbit snaring because it fits easily into my back pocket right a lot of times I won't take my uh, knapsack but I thought I was gonna have a wrap tonight because it was uh, or today because it was really good uh, good night for it I thought the rabbits would have ran good last night you know just does not cut like a silky saw. This cuts like a $20 Walmart special. So if anybody has done a lot of canoe pulling and you have any tips or tricks for me, I would love to hear uh, any trips or, or uh, tricks or tips that you have. What I would really like to do, I see a spot up here where I can uh, put this. Nature has provided me with a very oddly shaped tree over here. So that's what I'll try and do. It's, it's hung up good in the branches, eh? won't even fall so that's that's what I'm gonna try and do right now so this looks like this tree was designed to dry canoe poles Now, like I said, I don't know if this will work the way it's supposed to. <clears throat> but this is a trick the old fellas used to use. I want to get it so that the tree stays fairly straight here. It's approximately a 12 foot long pull maybe a little longer but I got it balanced so that the pole stays fairly straight here the only thing that's gonna hinder this piece of wood is uh, the fact that it's, it's below zero eh? so the sap is not running very good that's my first one like I said, uh, this area can use some silver culture. Tops of trees, the very tops are still alive, but so many dead branches, you know, uh, three quarters of the tree, maybe, maybe uh, four fifths of the tree is, is, is dead. Well, dead branches and stuff. It's just the very top that's given any bit of life at all. And that's why uh, they they grow so slow. 
right now I'm looking at I'm looking at a pole right there. Hey, if anybody's got any experience, leave a comment. Help me out with this. Uh, best time to harvest the pole. The amount of drying time you need, you know. Uh, how to how to straighten the ends of it. I know some people put little metal cups and stuff onto it. Uh, I was thinking about doing a burn, burn the ends, you know, that's the way the years ago they would straighten, uh, straighten some wood sometimes, make it a little bit tougher, round off the edges a, a little bit so it doesn't uh, mushroom over and then uh, burn that, you know. But uh, anyway, if anybody out there has any advice for me, let me know. This is something new I'm, I'm going to try. The only time uh, we, we had made this little wooden boat and we put it on this brook to cross this brook to get us over to the other side. And we tried paddling across, but the current was uh, still fairly strong and, and it, was, it was just a lot of work to paddle. And it wasn't very deep, probably four feet deep at, at the deepest where we went across. Maybe, maybe not even that, maybe three and a half. So uh, we found the best way to get across it was, was using a pole. And uh, you know, we built rafts and we pulled with rafts and stuff. But I, I, I've never pulled with a sit on top kayak. And I'm gonna give that a try, see how that works. It's such a beautiful morning here on the side of the, side of the mountain. I can look out there and I can see Bay St. George. I think I just sit here for a while and soak up that sun, nice to, it was cold this morning, very frosty. My uncle, my great uncle, Uncle Harold, he believes that the sun had healing powers. And anytime he got injured or wasn't feeling good, he, had, he used to make up his own concoction, rub it all over his body, and he'd go find a spot in the woods and lay naked in the sun. It was a hard case, did a lot of walk on him. He could walk. He, he left Stephenville one, one day, him and Slim. And they walked down to Point of Mall. They walked uh, uh, down to Fox Island. They walked up Fox Island River to where they could jump across it. Then they walked back down over land to, to Stephenville again. That's a long walk. Not too many people today could do that one day. They probably went 50 miles that day. Yeah, not too many people could do that anymore. But they can walk good. Up over here, there's a couple of trees that a moose was peeling his horn, or not peeling his horns on. I guess his horns is getting uh, itchy. You know, they, they when they, they 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 grow a film between their their antler and their and their skull, <clears throat> and that starts to drive them crazy. And there's two trees up there that he he, he raked on there. And now today, both of those trees are broke off. So he was back. He still hasn't shed his antler. It must be a younger bull, I think. Anyway, and he got another tree in here, tore right up. I'll show you those trees after. I think I'll just sit here and see if I can't hear a squirrel chirp off in the distance. And if I do, I'll go, uh, I'll go find them. But Uncle Harold, yeah, he, he was, uh, he used to call me Smokey. And uh, mom, he was in the hospital the same time dad was. They they had a room next to each other. Uncle Harold was getting old and he was in his, I guess he must have been in his late 80s then at that time. And he was already starting to get dementia. He might have been into his 90s. I think he lived to be 91 or 93, I can't remember. Anyhow, uh, he had uh, either Alzheimer's or dementia really bad. And Mom said uh, the nur the nurses normally keep him near the nurses' station so they keep an eye on him because he was a hard case. So so we're going in there to see Dad. It was my first time back, and she said Uncle Harold's in here too, but he won't he won't recognize you. So when we come around the corner, there he was sitting. They had him set up, set up, propped up there in a chair there at the uh, nurses' station. And Mom said, "Hello, Uncle Harold." And Uncle Harold looked up. But his, his eyes were kind of all glassed over, and they looked at me, and they come right clear. He's like, hey, Smokey. And that's how he always used to say hello to me. Hey, Smokey. He used to call me Smokey the Bear. 
spent a lot of time, Uncle Harold, me, mom, and dad, salmon fishing in, in Harry's. And Ma, mom would normally get on uh, dad's back to cross the river, and I would get on Uncle Harold's because back then I only had uh, hip boots. But uh, I was only a little boy, so my hip boots didn't come up too far, and I couldn't cross a lot of the brook, so I had to get piggybacked across, you know? You would think you would hear a, a squirrel chime in the distance, eh? There's a couple of different ways you can you can hunt squirrels. One is uh, just to go into where you know there are, where there are two, and sit still, sit quietly. Not a win is you can bait them, go into where they're two and sit quietly. And another way is just to, to walk through the woods. And uh, I always say that the squirrel is nature's tattletale. And a lot of times they won't chirp or chime or ball you out when you're right there. A lot of times they'll wait for you to uh, pass through their territory and then they'll, they'll get upset and squawk at you. Almost like to drive you off. Keep going, type thing, you know. But, oh, what a gorgeous day. I could sit up here all day. Here's the first tree. Here's the second tree. And, and here's uh, another tree. You got the, you can see you got the branches and everything broke off. They're all broke off on top of the snow. So you know that this has happened since the snow was down. This happened recently. So that moose is trying to, to shed his, uh, Antler, you know. What is this? This is a spot I go and chase rabbits sometimes. It's uh, not where I got my snare set, so I decided to uh, come in here and I'm glad I did. Because I got dinner here. Beautiful rabbit. The old Cooey, single shot 22. He was sitting just right in there. Made a perfect shot on him. He didn't move, didn't even kick. So I'm just gonna beat around this bush a little bit and see if I can't find another one. I just wanted to hike up to this bog. And I know the camera's not gonna pick it up. But there's a moose in there walking around. But it's, it's getting late. So I just went for a walk up in there and found that bog and a couple of moves. 
I was uh, looking for spots to set some rabbit snares. So years ago, this is what we would do, you know, if uh, if somebody was snaring by you, you would, uh, if they had a rabbit in their snare, you would take the, the rabbit out, you would hang the rabbit in the tree, and then you would replace their snare with one of your snares, and they would do the same for you, you know? And that way, when the next time they come to check their their snares, they might have one in a snare and one in a tree. It was just a good thing to do, but then people started stealing rabbits. So we couldn't uh, help each other out like that again, you know? Because uh, two bad apples ruined it for everybody.